Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the curves panel that's found in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. For this image, I already did some basic tone and color adjustments. Then I went into the details panel and I added some sharpening and luminance noise reduction and I did lens corrections. Now I'd like to demonstrate for you the curves panel and to fetch it, all I need to do is click on show more then click on curves. Those of you familiar with Photoshop know that Photoshop has a curves adjustment. This is the same thing. And those of you familiar with Lightroom know that Lightroom has a tone curve adjustment. It's the same exact thing. And really what this is, it's a visual plot or representation of all the tones in your image with the darkest tones residing in the lower left-hand corner of the diagonal line and the brightest tones residing up here in the top right-hand corner of the diagonal line. All the other tones are between those darkest and lightest tones. Now, they call this diagonal line the curve, even though it's a diagonal line. And what you could do is you could manipulate the curve in such a way where you're going to either be brightening or darkening specific tones. If you pull the line down, you're going to darken the tones that are near that part of the line. If you push the line up, you'll be brightening the tones that are near that part of the line. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'll show you how you would add contrast to an image. This is the most common function of the curves panel. When you add contrast to an image, all you're really doing is you're making those darker tones a little darker, and you're making the brighter tones a little brighter. So to do that, First of all, you would put an anchor point at the midtones, right in the middle here. We don't want to touch or mess with the midtones. We just want to make the darker tones a little darker and the brighter tones a little brighter. So I anchored down those midtones. Then I would go down here in the lower left hand corner of the diagonal line where the darker tones reside, and I would add a point there. And then I would pull that point down. So I'm pulling it down and I'm making the darker tones a little darker. Then I would go up here in the top right hand corner of this diagonal line and I would put a point. Then I would push that point up. So I'm making the brighter tones a little brighter. And that is what is called a classic S curve. And that will add contrast to the image. So there is before and there is after. So you could see how you could very easily add contrast to an image with the tone curve. Now the real power of the tone curve and why many, us, many of us prefer it over the contrast slider is that you'll able to specifically adjust very limited amount of tone in the image with the curve. For example, let's say I want to add contrast just to the darkest tones and just to the brightest tones. I don't want to add contrast to any of the midtones or even much of the highlights and much of the shadows, just the darkest tones and the brightest tones. So to do that, I'll reset. I'll put my anchor point in the middle. And then what I'll do is I'll go way down here in the lower, lower left hand part of the diagonal line. That's where the darkest tones reside. I'll put a point there and pull that point down. So I'm making the darkest tones darker. Then I'll go way up in the top right hand corner of this line, put a point and push up. So I'm making the brightest parts of the tone brighter. And as you look at the image, you could see that the midtones really weren't touched. So there is before and there's after. So with the tone curve or with the curves panel, you're better able to adjust specific tones in your image. You cannot do that with the classic contrast slider. You're just going to be adding contrast to everything. So the curves 
panel gives you much greater control, and that's why many of us like it. Another advantage of the curves panel is you can manipulate the specific color channels. And if you look, I'll reset this, and if you look at this diagonal line and at the top it says all, that means those adjustments we just did adjusted all three color channels. To the right of that are the individual color channels, red, green, and blue. And with those, you could just affect those color channels. And you most often do this for one of two reasons. Either you want to add a tinge of color to specific tones in the image, or you want to do some type of effect, like an old film, an old school film look. You could do that very easily when you manipulate these individual channels. For example, let's say I want to warm the highlights a little bit. I would click on the blue channel and I would go in the top or right hand corner of the, this curve, that is where the highlights reside, and I would pull this down. And you can see when I pulled it down, it added a little bit of yellow to the highlights. And that is one thing that you should learn about the color channels in the curves adjustment. Whenever you pull any of the color channels to this lower right diagonal corner, you'll add a complementary color to that channel to those tones. Now when I talk about complementary colors, just let me say real quick that there's two different types of models for complementary colors. Probably the more common model that we see in photography is the RGB additive color model. And with that color model, the complementary color of blue is actually orange. With the curves panel, it uses the CMY subjective color model. And with that color model, the complementary color of blue is yellow. So whenever you move any of this blue tone curve to this lower right-hand corner, you'll get the CMY subjective color model complementary color to blue, which is yellow. Similarly, if we pop over to green and I pull any of this curve to this lower right-hand corner, I'll get the complementary color of green, which is magenta. So I'd add magenta to the highlights in this case. And finally, if we go to red and I pull any part of the curve to this lower right-hand corner, we'll get that CMY subjective color model, complementary color to red, which is cyan. So that really allows you to kind of colorize specific tones in your image. Now, very often, we like to add an old film look to our image. So what we'll do is we make the highlights a little yellow. So we'll go to the blue curve and we'll go to the top right hand part of the curve and we'll pull it down. So we made the highlights a little yellow. Then what we want to do is we want to make the shadows a little bit blue or maybe even a little bit purple. Now if you want to really add the actual color of the curve that you're using to your image, you would push the curve to this diagonal corner that we were just using. So complementary co colors are to the lower right-hand part of the curve. The actual color will be to the upper left-hand corner of the curve. So I would go down here and I would push this up. So I'm adding bluish tinge to the shadows. So you could see there's below, before, after. So to reset that into better demonstrate, if I go over here to the green curve and I want to add green to the shadows, I would go over here and push the green that way. And if I want to add green to the highlights, I would go over here and push it this way. So I'm adding green to the highlights. So you could see how pushing it to this corner will add that color to the image. Pushing it to the diagonal corner will add the complementary color to the image. So magenta for green that way. So you can see how you really have a lot of power over your image when you use the tone curve. Now if you search online you'll see a lot of recipes 
for certain types of looks that you could achieve with the tone curve. And those of you that use Instagram and see Instagram filters, almost all the Instagram filters actually are doing something with the tone curve, and that's all they really do. So they add this kind of look to your image. So you could really mix and match. You could go over to red and add a little cyan to the highlights by pulling down here, but then go to green, and then you could maybe add a little green to the highlights over there. So you're kind of mixing cyan with green. You know, so you could do a lot of things with the tone curve. And the best thing I could recommend is just experiment with it. At the very least, I would recommend that you get used to adding contrast to your image with the tone curve so you could better match the optimal contrast for a scene. Because let's face it, when you're just moving a slider, you're just adding contrast to everything. So it's kind of a blanket contrast control. Whereas with curves, you're better able to speci specify specifically where in the image you want contrast to occur. So you could do that very easily, again, with that curves panel. So practice with it. See if you could find some um, recipes and tricks and tips on how to get those different types of looks if you're interested in doing that. Um, maybe in the future. This um, video series, first of all, is going to be very long, so I don't have the time to do it in this video series. But maybe in the future, I'll do kind of a video series on curves where you could do different types of looks with the curves panel, not only in On One Photo Raw 2018, but in Photoshop Lightroom and any program that has a curves adjustment. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.